Good morning and welcome to worship this second Sunday after Pentecost, June 14th. And you can continue with our service. Please open your bulletins and follow along. We begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace through Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with your opening hymn, number 858, verses 1, 2, and 4. continue with the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us continue with our hymn of praise.
continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour out your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. first reading is from the 19th chapter of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the, wizard, in, in the wilderness. 
Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and how I brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possessions out of all the people. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and, and set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now read responsively Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come, with, come into the presence of God with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. The second reading is taken from the fifth chapter of Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gospel acclamation, holly, holly. gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And I'll be reading through uh, 10, 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the har laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. 
Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I find it interesting that even in this, the disciples have no say in the matter. Uh, Jesus invites them, and they just do it. Just in their, in their call, when Jesus went about the countryside uh, picking out his disciples, it shows that they just left what they were doing and followed him without question. And in this case, Jesus has been with them for a while, and, and they've seen a number of things. Uh, it says that he's... They've seen him cure diseases and, and every sickness of every kind, and now it's their turn. And the, the author from Matthew uh, says nothing about their response to this whole thing. They're to go out two by two and, and to the countryside and do the same thing now. It's time to go solo. Um, you've had enough training. Um, as a weightlifter, I know that sometimes you're tempted to overtrain. You get a little overzealous, and sometimes that uh, does more harm than good. Uh, sometimes it, you can start damaging ligaments and tendons and other things that you don't want to have happen because it takes a long time to heal. And, and so overtraining is, is something we don't want to do, uh, knowing our limits sometimes, uh, training just enough and maybe a little less than what you think you need to, uh, but rest is important as well. But it, it's a tendency for us to want to be well prepared. And that's a good thing. We don't want to go off without any thought, without any training, without any preparation at all. Um, that would be ludicrous to do that. But we often wonder, you know, if I only had more of this, if I had more training, if I had gotten my, my accounts in order at home or at church, or if I get just enough of this or that, then I'll be ready. And uh, Jesus just sent his disciples out, um, ready or not. I, I think he, he felt that they were ready. As often, leaders will find those who, who uh, are the mentees and, and decide, yeah, you've got enough to go on your own now. And, and um, as, as leaders, uh, we often, uh, within ourselves, wonder if we're well prepared enough, and others will tell us, yes, you are. And as leaders and mentors, we, we can often tell other people that I think you're ready to, to move on to the next step, uh, even though you don't feel like you're ready to do that. Um, even leaders have said, sometimes you just have to just start. Um, and, and you'll learn along the way, of course, and you hope you do. Uh, and there might be rough edges to begin with, but you'll continue the course and, and, and um, do what you need to do. So Jesus' mission to the, to the world for his disciples was to continue. And, and what was it? To proclaim the kingdom of heaven draw near. Um, to heal and to cure and all of these things. And he doesn't say um, how they're to do it. I imagine they'll, they've learned through prayer that they can draw the strength of God through that. Uh, he tells them at this point, don't go to the Gentiles. I think there's something more that he has in mind for the Gentiles. But to be safe, to start out with, go to the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to those who really need to hear it, to see it. Um, and I think a lot of their work was done uh, by hand, by um, action, probably more than words, because as we know, sometimes actions speak louder than words. But Jesus was with them, and I imagine as they were on their way um, in their pairs of, you know, uh, he was praying for them fervently. And he was probably doing the same in his own region of where he was going to be. 
but I imagine he covered a bigger territory and there was much work to be done, and so it was time. Um, so for us, it's time. We may not feel like we're ready for certain things, but there is a time and place for things. And we have people to support us, and there are people to, to guide us and give us uh, instruction in different ways. And there's always a sense of learning, and that's a good thing. Uh, we don't know it all. There's always something we have to learn in one way or another. So as we see that Jesus sent them out uh, for healing of the world, the mission of Jesus. Thanks to be to God for that. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day. Will you come and follow me? Verses 1, 2, and 4. Continue with the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick, feed all who hunger, empower all those voices whose voices go unheard, and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. We especially pray for Mary Pat, Ron Wabshaw, Edna Dauberpool, 
Linda Recton, Lois Helm, Dave Helm, all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic, the family and friends of George Floyd, for Jackie Lowe Warren, Talita Manthe, and others we name in our hearts before you now. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with Holy Communion, so if you have your communion kits or bread, grape juice, wine, please bring them out and continue and follow me. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us together pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Receive the blessing. Now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Continue with the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or nor anything else in all creation would be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, the creator, Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 669, verses 1, 2, and 4. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.